What's going on, people? Welcome to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Podcast. I'm your host, TW. Me and BQ still had some scheduling conflicts. We're almost right back to getting it back to you with the two-person show. But for now, as usual, I'm going to hold us down. All right, now look, before we get started, do us a favor, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you're subscribed to the channel. Hit the like button to go ahead and boost this video so everybody knows how great it is. And hit the notifications bell so that you get notified anytime we drop new content on this channel. Now, today is going to be a little bit of a quickie. I got stuff to do. So I'm just going to go over some of the big stuff that went on. And, you know, you guys, make sure you drop your comments and let me know what you think. All right, I'm ready. You ready? Here we go. Let's not bury the lead here. The biggest thing people were talking about this week was another round of releases from WWE. And this time, it was it was a, a, a pretty star-studded group of names. Um, this round included Aleister Black, Braun Strowman, Ruby Riot, Lana. Man, Lana, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and... Uh, there was somebody else that I thought was kind of a, an important person. Um, uh, regardless. But you know, you you I'm sure you've seen the reports. You know the names. And I think that the number one thing that Impact fans are thinking about right now in regard to this is who could, should, or would maybe show up in Impact. And to me, it's really not, it, you know... Look, eliminate Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman, I'd love to see a Braun Strowman versus Moose match, right? I think that will be a, a, a fun, big match. But Braun Strowman, to me, is made for AEW. AEW is the place where people can go make the second most money next to WWE right now. And they have, they have the biggest American platform. So if you're going to have a chance to go to AEW, that's where you're going to go, just being realistic. I think if you look at what they do... Um, Braun doesn't necessarily seem like a style fit, but he also could stand out because he's, you know, kind of a big plotting style wrestler. And that's a contrast to so much of what they have, right? They have a lot of small, flippy guys, no sell type of guys. So having a match with Braun could be something that's totally different. So I see Braun as a fit for AEW. I think that's where he's going right away. I think uh, Buddy Murphy. I think he's also going to go to AEW. I totally do. But I think he'll be a good fit in Impact. I could just see him having some bangers with Josh Alexander, with Chris Bay, um, you know, with, with Trey Miguel. Like, I, I could see Buddy Murphy, Murphy being a good fit in Impact. Um, the other person out of this list who I think would be a great fit for Impact is Ruby Riot. Impact's knockouts division has, you know, really needed another top style face to get they need they need they need an infusion of new talent they need new talent they need people to keep it fresh they need uh you know um they need somebody who can rival diana perrazzo as a personality and also you know with a little bit of star power so i think ruby riot in the knockouts division would be very interesting and you could just build you could start building to a big match with her and diana perrazzo right away um so yeah i think diana perrazzo and Ruby Riot could be something, you know, the headlines, pay-per-views. I, listen, why not, right? Why not? The next bit of news that I think is newsworthy is a report from uh, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com. Was it him? I don't want to attribute to the wrong person. But there were reports coming out that um, there was new talent backstage at Impact Wrestling. And attached to the, to the tweet was a picture of... Um, I believe her name is Frost. And so I looked her up. I wanted to know a little bit about her. And hey, look, she looks like the type of talent that certainly Impact should be looking for right now. Again, someone who's not known on the national stage. She has a good look, potentially ready for TV. Probably just needs to have, you know, some TV work so she can, you know, get her character right, get her TV match presentation up. And um, the, that's the type of talent that Impact could really use. So if you talk about adding somebody like Ruby Riot, who's a vet, who can come right to the top of your card, and then adding a newer talent like Frost, who can, you know, work her way up and get better and better as we go along, develop kind of the way we've seen a Kiara Hogan develop over time, right? And Kiara Hogan, she's, I think, worked her way into being one of the top knockouts in, in, in the whole division. And, you know, over time, we just saw her develop, right? 
develop her ring her, her ring work, develop her presentation. Her presentation was probably the biggest thing because her ring work was always good, but developing the character presentation is key, right, for TV wrestling. So adding a new talent like Frost to uh, to a roster that has, you know, some vets, some people that are in the middle still trying to figure it out, and then, like I said, if you can get a piece like Ruby Riot, I think that will make the knockouts a very strong division going forward. So I'm interested to see any new talent that they could possibly add. Speaking of new talent that could be added, we got a vignette this week from the former Steve Cutler uh, of, of, um, of the Forgotten Sons. And we had already seen this promo circulating online, but apparently he's come to some sort of agreement with Impact and he's going to be showing up on Impact Wrestling. It's really just, you know... He's sitting by, you know, uh, by some papers and he pours a glass of whiskey and then drinks it. And it's like, oh, OK, hey, this guy's going to come here and drink whiskey. I don't know, <laughs> but um, I'm interested to see what that's going to be. There were rumors circulating before this week's Impact show that we would see a vignette for a, deb a debuting former WWE talent who, quote, never got his chance in WWE. And I would say that's a fair description of this guy's time in WWE. He was in the Forgotten Sons, and that was never a more pro appropriate name for an act than those guys in WWE. They had the former Gunner from TNA, and um, there was another guy. Oh, 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 it was, um, it was Buddy Murphy's old tag team partner. It was Murphy and... Oh my God, what was the guy? It was Murphy and somebody with Alexa Bliss back in NXT. Then they broke those two guys up. And the other guy, who was not Buddy Murphy, he became a member of the Forgotten Sons. And really, honestly, that was such a perfect a perfect name for those guys because we really forgot about all those guys. I forgot some of those guys were even on the show. But here they are, and now they're gone. Most of them are gone. The one guy that's there, though, is, is still Gunner. I don't know how this guy is hanging around. I don't know if he's just, like, not answering his phone on cut day. But somehow Gunner is still in WWE and Braun Strowman isn't. Go figure. Without doubt, the biggest piece of news that came out from this week's Impact show is that Slammiversary will have fans. Now, apparently, they were on the fence about whether to do this or not. And I think seeing... The big crowd that AEW had this past week, and they've continued to have big crowds. I think that kind of pushed Scott Demore, Scott Demore over the edge with the decision making on this one. So the decision was made that they will have fans at Slammiversary, and it's not going to be at the auditorium that was previously teased in the first Slammiversary uh, vignette. Uh, if you guys remember, if you go back to the original Slammiversary vignette for this year, there was a shot of, uh, I believe it was the Rhine Auditorium. Um, and and it looked like that would have been a nice venue. Um, but, you know, for whatever reason, maybe they can't secure the date or maybe they, you know, are not confident they could sell it out in time. But they decided to not do it there. They're going to still tape it at Skyway Studios, but they are going to allow a limited number of fans. And I say, welcome, welcome, welcome. Adding fans back to the mix I think it's going to be amazing. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, they got to find a way to, you know, get that seating so that, well, I'm not going to say pack as many people in there as possible because, you know, given the, the, the pandemic that is still here, okay, it's not over, you don't want to just start packing people in because it only takes one person to infect a bunch of people and you really don't want to do that. So take whatever safety precautions you have to, but getting cheering paying fans in the building for the show, I think is going to inject a jolt of energy into an Impact Wrestling show that we have not seen in a very, very long time. This is huge news. Um, the tickets went on sale on, I believe, Friday, and they sold out immediately. So congratulations to Impact Wrestling on having a sold out crowd of probably 100 people. But <laughs> still... I hope it's the loudest, most excited 100 people that have ever been in one place at one time. Congratulations, Impact Wrestling. You've made it through to the other side of the pandemic, and you're, there are fans back in the building. And I think I speak for fans everywhere when we say, welcome back. 
Let's talk a little bit about this week's episode of Impact because there are two newsworthy notes coming out of this show that I could not do a show today without touching on because I know this is what you guys are talking about. So the first one is this. I was poo-pooing the idea of putting the 60-minute Iron Man match on BTI instead of just having it as a cool feature on this week's episode of Impact. But I got to give you guys credit. I got to give you guys credit. It worked out perfectly. The 60-minute iron match on BTI was great, and then it bled over into the start of Impact Wrestling for uh, a, a, a sudden death, and it was dope, man. Uh, Josh Alexander and, and, and TJP, they put on a banger, an absolute banger, if you have not seen it. Impact has uploaded it to their YouTube channel and you can watch the full thing without commercial interruptions, which actually I plan to do because to be honest, the commercial breaks do take you out of the action a little bit and I would like to sit through and watch this whole thing all the way through. I think I'll put it on tomorrow while I do my my, my workout. Um, but it was a banger. And not only was it a banger, but they also did some character development. Ugh, they did some character development with Josh Alexander. There was a part towards... Um, towards the end of the match where he was he was up one fall to zero on TJP and they were really just trying to, you know, either he get another fall to, to, to put this thing away or TJP get a fall to try and even it up. There's a part where they're fighting outside the ring and Josh Alexander grabs TJP, pulls him up to the top of the ramp and he's going to do something to him on, um, on the top of the stage up there. But people run out and they basically stop him. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, is this going to be, you know, some sort of character turn for, for, for Josh Alexander? Like, are we seeing a more vicious side of him? Is he going to, you know, want to come back and get revenge on the people who stopped him from doing that? You know, what if that would have cost him the match? What if that would have cost him a fall that eventually ended up costing him the match? It didn't, but I'm very interested to see, you know, if there's going to be more development to this super vicious side of Josh Alexander. Um... Eventually, eventually they get back in the ring, and TJP pulls out a, a, a pinfall with as with like one second to go. So as time's expiring, to make it one to one, and then they go to sudden death, and Josh Alexander uh, eventually gets a pinfall to to win the match. It was really a phenomenal match. It was a phenomenal match, and as it was going on, the wrestlers kind of started slowly bleeding out of the locker room to be around ringside. And by the time was the, the match was finished, ringside was surrounded with, with talent who were cheering for the match. It was just, it was good to see, man. That was good stuff. It was the type of stuff we have not seen on Impact in a very long time with people around the ring just making noise and cheering for the wrestlers. And it just makes the product so much better, man. So, so, so much better. Now, a very interesting development happened backstage. So Josh Alexander just had this great match, right? What's next? Right? You got to ask what's next. And we see different wrestlers coming up to uh co coming up to congratulate Josh Alexander on his big match and they also want to let him know that they're going to be next in line to challenge him. Now, of course, this will probably lead to some sort of multi-man match. I'd prefer if they just do it, you know, more tournament style, right? Like let's have Guys having great matches, right? So this, that, I think that's how you really set the standard that this is what we're going to expect from X Division Wrestling. Let's let all these guys have banger match after banger match so that you know when I see an X Division match, this is what I can expect, right? <coughs> this will be the one spot on the card where I can expect that, you know, NXT Ring of Honor style where, you know, we're going to kill each other, minimal selling, and a thousand false finishes, you know, that type of style that people love so much. But you can't oversaturate the match, the, excuse me, you can't oversaturate the whole card with it. It can't be every show. That's how uh, I was watching, oh, what was it last week? The um, the AEW pay-per-view, uh, whatever it was. And just like NXT, man, just like the NXT takeovers, you burn me out after three or four matches. Everybody can't do everything on every match. There has to be some flow to the show, right? There has to be some, you know, this was a squash match. This was a brawl. This was, you know, a technical match. 
you know, this was a comedy match, you know, this was the the super athletic, no selling, um, you know, thousand false finishes match, right? There has to be a flow to the show. Everybody can't do everything on every match. Let's have some variety to the style of matches that we're having. All right, that's that's, that's my, my little side rant. But um, yeah, I think let, listen. Let that be the X division style. Let that be the style that the X division is known for, and then make sure everybody else stays away from it. Okay, so if you're not in X division, I don't want to see you doing um, Spanish flies and 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 dives and. A thousand hurricane runners and all of this stuff, right? You know what I mean? Like let's let's keep some stuff unique so we can have so we can make the X Division special. That's been my beef with the X Division for so long, which is that what is the X Division? Because what we used to call X Division style is the style that everybody on the card wrestles now, right? Pull up again any NXT show, pull up any uh AEW show. 90% of the wrestlers are wrestling what we would call the cruiserweight X Division style. So if everybody's doing it, then there's nothing special about it. So there has to be some way to make the X Division stuff unique. So maybe that's it. But I want to focus in on something that Josh Alexander said to Scott Demore before all the challengers walked up. <clears throat> he said to Scott Demore, he said, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but he basically told him, Kenny Omega has the world title. He's off, and we don't know when that title is coming back. So until that title comes back, I'm the king of the mountain. I'm the man around here. And I thought that was a very interesting choice of words that he said, king of the mountain. I was like, hmm. And it made me wonder if there's a chance that the X Division title could become the king of the mountain championship. You think that's the thing? I mean, I just gave you a whole reason, a whole dissertation as to why the X Division really, excuse me, is undefined in today's world of wrestling, right? And having that, calling that the King of the Mountain Championship and making it a championship where it's all about big matches, you know, marathon style matches where, you know, you just really have a great respect for the person who wins this super athletic marathon style match that could be something i i, I mean i i think that could be something um this is where i want to i want to get your feedback what do you guys think about that idea what do you think about replacing the x division with the king of the mountain championship or just kind of calling it now the king of the mountain championship and making it specific to that style of match right making it specific to that style of match so that this is the only place on the show where we see that style of match and this now becomes the calling card of of um, of that title. So sound off in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think that's a good idea? Do you think the X Division is still something that can be unique? Do you think it's something they should stick with? Um, is there any way you think to make the X Division better? Let me know. But what I think is another interesting possibility of that is what if Moose isn't the one to take the title off Kenny Omega? Hmm? What if what we're seeing now is Josh Alexander becoming a made man so that he can be the one to take the title off Kenny Omega? Now, if you want to talk about making a wrestler, you can't make a wrestler better than that. I've been saying about Josh Alexander for the longest time that this guy looks like he could be Impact's own Kurt Angle. And if you think about Kurt Angle when he debuted in WWE, he had this first year that was incredible he beat everybody like not like an undefeated streak kind of way but he was just beating people i didn't expect him to beat i think he beat the rock you know he beat you know the triple h and you know and and before you know it you looked up and kurt angle was the world champion you're like what why not why not josh alexander why not have josh alexander be the guy to dethrone kenny omega after running through the entire X Division or, or or holding the X Division Championship and running through the roster. Man, oh man, what if, what if Josh Alexander holds that title for a long time, beats everybody as X Division Champion, and then decides to 
get out the defibrillator, and revive option C from the dead. And he wants to cash in his X Division Championship for a shot at Kenny Omega's world title and have him win. I love that idea. I, I, I mean, maybe it's because I just came up with it, but I love that idea. What do you guys think about that? Do you think Josh Alexander could or should be the one to dethrone Kenny Omega? Now, listen, I love Moose. I love Moose. But I think in Josh Alexander, you have someone who is unknown on the national scene. And he, for better or worse, will be known as an impact guy. So you take this guy, have him get the big win over Kenny Omega, and now you have put your stamp on a guy who the world only knows as an impact guy. And he will be the guy to take the title back from Kenny Omega. I think you you, you make Josh Alexander a made man. You have him keep that title and you have him run with it for a very long time. Woo! Woo! Listen, impact, call me up. Pay your boy. You know, I'm giving you this, I'm giving you this gold for free. All right. <laughs> Listen, I, I love, I love, I love the idea. I love the idea. But, but let me know what you guys think. Drop your comments below. Speaking of Moose and Kenny Omega in the world title, it's time for this week's episode of, oh, excuse me. It's time for this week's edition of World Title Watch, where I look at the comings and goings the rankings and stankings of who potentially could be the next Impact World Champion, who might actually get the title back from back from Kenny Omega and bring it back home to Impact Wrestling and to the Impact Wrestling fans, you and I, the glorious people that we are. Mwah, we love you, okay? All right, now, a very interesting development happened on the show this week. So, we know that Moose and Sammy Callahan had been buttonheads, and I was theorizing that there could be a potential plot twist in line here where uh, Sammy Callahan somehow becomes the one to defeat Kenny Omega. And I tell you, I, I think that there's good in that. There's good potential in that because Sammy Callahan is an impact guy. He's an impact guy. He's someone that the impact fans, you know, resonate with. They know him as an impact guy. And he's someone that the world would pretty much know as an impact guy. And this week we got to see how Sammy Callahan is getting his shot at the Impact World title. And so here's how this is going to go down. Um, Sammy Callahan has been inserted into the main event at Against All Odds. It's now going to be a triple threat, a three-way, whatever you want to call it, between um, Kenny Omega, Moose, and Sammy Callahan. So you got the three of them. And, um, and, and this is going to be, yeah, man, this is going to be, <laughs> it should be a fun match. That, that's for sure. This should be a fun match, but it's way too early for Kenny Omega to lose the title, right? It's way too early for Kenny Omega to lose the title. And so, you know, I really, I, I, I don't think he's going to be losing it. And I was actually a little bit worried seeing that Moose was getting the shot this soon because I thought that Moose would be the one to dethrone Kenny Omega. Now, being the fact, given the fact that Sammy Callahan has been added to this match, I still think Moose could be the one because you're probably adding Sammy Callahan to this match so he can take the pin, right? And this way, this still keeps Moose with the excuse that I never got my one-on-one -on -one shot with Kenny Omega. And so, listen, I think we could have something here. I think we could have something here. I think, I think this is just, you know, this is a stopgap pay-per-view. I don't expect a major title change like this to happen at against all odds. Um, if you're going to do something like have somebody take the world title off Kenny Omega, it needs to be done in front of fans, in front of paying fans, um, on pay-per-view in a big spot, in a big moment. So, um, I really would be shocked if that title comes off of Kenny Omega. Totally shocked if that title comes off of Kenny Omega. And um, and I still think Moose is the one to do it. I think Moose is the one to do it, but I love the Josh Alexander possibility too. I love the, the possibility that, listen, we think that Moose is going to be the one to take it off. And maybe this all builds to Moose versus Kenny Omega at Bound for Glory, or, you know, Moose versus Kenny Omega at Slammiversary, 
and then Kenny Omega beats Moose, and then maybe we get Josh Alexander versus Kenny Omega at Bound for Glory. And that could be the one, man. That could be the one. That could be a big moment for Impact where you have a guy that Impact fans can put their arms around and say, this is our guy. He's an Impact guy. And the world just saw him beat Kenny Omega. And not only that, but Josh Alexander has what so many professional wrestlers lack these days, and that's realism. Like, Josh Alexander looks like he really is... Uh, you know, a guy who worked on his wrestling holds, his grappling holds in his basement. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he just has that look about him. Um, and so he's totally believable. So if you see Josh Alexander putting somebody in an ankle lock, you believe it, right? You believe it. And um, yeah, man. So I, I think I think this could be great. I think this could be great for Josh. This could be great for Impact. This could be great for everybody. Um, and that's our edition of World Title Watch, all right? And now it's time for your favorite part of the show because this is where you get to be a part of the show. It's time for from the comment section where I dive in to your comments that you drop right here below this YouTube video and I respond to them, all right? Make sure you drop your name and where you're from so that I can give you a shout out and let's see what you guys had to say on last week's video. All right, here we go. All right. Turk28 said, Swan has always had top guy talent. It's just got ignored for so long because he's small. Only WWE diehards praise Vince's business acumen. Everyone else thinks he's out of touch and needs to retire. Either way, nothing he does revolves around his talent looking inferior to another company. Um, Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. As far as Rich Swan, you know, always having top guy talent, listen, showing it, or not is the is the difference, right? It's like what you um, you can have all the potential in the world, right? You can have the potential to be the best three point shooter in the world in basketball, but until you actually do it on a court, it doesn't matter. And until I saw Rich Swan standing up to W. Morrissey in the way that he has, like not backing down, and until there's a story of you know, Rich Swan is facing a big match, but I still want to see how he's going to rebound from his last match. See, right now, if you look at it like this, the whole story is pretty much about Rich Swan, right? W. Morrissey's the new guy, and, and of course, there's a great chance they could be doing this just to continue to build him up. But Rich Swan had a story before this, and this can just be a continuation of Rich Swan's story. See, if you're a true attraction, a true top guy, it doesn't have to always be about the title. And I think that's where Rich Swan has a chance to be if they continue to put him in these high-profile situations. Turp28, thank you for your question. All right, Blur Cider 21 says, Deanna already defeated Rosemary. So if Rosemary defeated another knockout in a tag match, it would not be worthy of a chance at the knockouts title. I think Grace as a heel would be interesting, but with the lack of knockouts in the tag division, it just makes that division even weaker. Yeah, look, man, I, I, they're scrambling for stuff to do with the knockouts division. I think looking at who and what they have right now, based on what we've seen, I think the best thing that the most interesting thing they could do right now is find some way to create a program between Deanna Perrazzo and Tasha Steeles. I think Tasha Steeles... Her personality jumps off the screen. She's a, a legit star. And I think the more you put the microphone in her hands, the better. She's going to create fun, memorable things. And um, the most interesting thing, the most interesting combination they could probably do right now would be some sort of Deanna Perrazzo versus Tasha Steeles. So, they're, but they're very far away from that, right? They're very far away from that because we know Tasha Steeles is part of Fire and Flavor. That, com that tag team combination is working great right now, so I don't see any reason to really break it up. So, look, man, they, they got to try to find some interesting matchups, and they just got to kind of rotate through these same people until they get some new talent in there. Thank you for your question, Blur Side 21. Uh, Bland Skies 28 says, I think the problem going forward is Impact doesn't really have that top new upper mid Carter that's on Omega's level. I don't think Sammy can defeat Omega. Maybe if they can sign Samoa Joe or Brian, 
but I just think Impact has that dude. Oh, I just don't think Impact has that dude on the roster currently. So, uh, thank you for your question, Bland Skies 28. Listen, I think I just lay out a perfect scenario in which we see Josh Alexander have a rise from being, like you said, that upper mid Carter into being a true main eventer. So they need to do him very similar to what happened with Austin Aries back in, I think it was 2012, where he was the X Division champion and just putting on great match after great match after great match. And then before you know it, you look up and you got him and you got the world champion who is also running through everybody and there's nobody left but each other. And eventually at some point, they got to butt heads. And I think if you do it that way, you're going to have a star-making performance with Josh Alexander. Now, the key then will be to have something lined up for after Josh Alexander takes the title from Kenny Omega. And that'll be the interesting thing to see is how do you capitalize now on the man who beat Kenny Omega? Uh, thanks for your question. All right. Country Girl says, wow, NJPW, I miss watching on Access TV. They wrestled every Friday night until Impact came back. Not sure if they should go with Vince. Um, thank you for your question, Country Girl. So I, I think that the idea, I, I talked about this last week, but listen, I think the idea of New Japan going with WWE, it sounds nice, but I, I really think it will be bad for New Japan in the long run. And the simple fact is because Vince likes his wrestling how he likes it. And even if they spent all this money to acquire the exclusive services of New Japan, they're never going to feature them in the way that you like to see them. If Vince thought that was the way to do wrestling, he would be doing wrestling that way. He has the roster to put on New Japan style matches right now. He already has it. If he wanted to do that, he would have been doing it. So he's not going to do that with the New Japan talent. So what you'll have if you get this New Japan WWE partnership is you'll have all the talent you love from New Japan doing all the ridiculous stuff you hate from WWE. And so I think that, it, honestly, it, it, would be, it would be a disaster. I think it would be a disaster for New Japan fans. I don't think New Japan Pro Wrestling would be happy with the way their talent would be used. Um, and there would be potential for some, some big matches, but I just don't know that the, the juice would be worth the squeeze. That's just my opinion, though. All right, Ethan Thomas says, Rich Swan is great. Some people may call him out for how he looks, but having freedom, having freeform dreadlocks myself, I get the same, uh, I get same of some people having to look a certain way. As soon as people stop being ignorant to looks, everyone else realizes how great he is. Um, so thanks for your question, Ethan. Listen, I think you're right. I think that <clears throat> people do look at Rich Swan. He doesn't have the best muscle tone. Um, you know, his hair looks crazy a lot of times. And listen, you're right. Listen, it, it, you know, people say all the time, wrestling is a cosmetic business, right? Like I I often, um, I don't bring this up on, on, on the platform a lot because I'm not into like body shape. My guy, look at me, I'm not like a muscle man. Um, but I think that there's a lot of wrestlers in Impact who aren't in their best shape. And I think it's crazy because a lot of them would never go on any show for Vince McMahon looking the way that they look. Um, and you know, that's something, uh, if it's your job to be on television looking like a superstar athlete, then I think you need to put in the effort, put in the time and effort and the discipline when you're eating to look like a superstar athlete. That's just, you know, to me that adds to the presentation of a wrestler, but <clears throat> listen, Rich Swan, Rich Swan got receipts, even just in impact. If you look up some of the best matches Rich Swan has had. Rich Swan has a catalog of great matches just in Impact. I think Impact needs to do a better job of presenting Rich Swan like the talent that he is. Now, for me, Rich Swan has always been a little bit tough to get behind. You know, you can Google the stuff about him with his wife, um, and you know those type of things. That, that that's that's a trigger for me. Um, so it's, it's always been a little tough for me to kind of really root for Rich Swan on a personal level. Um, but you know, I hope he's, you know, I hope he's made amends with her and 
um, and, 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 you know, reformed his ways, um, when it comes to that stuff and those things hurt too. Okay. Those things hurt too. You don't want to spend the time and effort to market and promote somebody as a big star when somebody is just going to Google and be like, what about this thing he did? Right? So it, it, the same thing happened with Tessa Blanchard. They put in all the effort to do the first woman's world champion, right? They took a big swing at having something that was going to be a big attraction. And what happened? It all blew up in her face because of her, her, her own, past coming back to haunt her and really coming back to haunt them and so i think that's part of it too right that's part of the reason why you haven't seen rich swan get marketed as a big star but listen you know if it's about the wrestling he's got receipts man you know go pull up the impact plus app and you know look up some of the great matches rich swan has had rich swan has had some bangers in impact wrestling um but you know, again, there's reasons why Rich Swan hasn't been presented as a star. But I think more and more from a wrestling standpoint, uh, we're seeing he has the qualities to be a top guy. So thank you for your question, Ethan. All right. Brian Moore says, remember when they wrote Alley off in the Undead Dead Realm? That was a dope way to leave a promotion. Also, TJP and Falaba should call themselves the Yano Boys or... Ba time. Amen, brother. Preach on. <laughs> All right. uh, I like that, man. That was a good. That was a good comment. Yeah, man. I, I think Impact could definitely do a better job of really branding their tag teams and presenting them because their tag team division needs some life. They need something that fans are going to get excited about when they hear the music hit, right? Um, a lot of tag teams have just been kind of thrown together. Um, you know, the Motor City machine, machine Guns were something people were excited about for a short time, but obviously there were no fans there. So, you know, that... The, right now, it feels like that came and went pretty fast. So I'm hoping they can get some tag teams that they can brand and market and get behind and, and have fans be excited about tag team wrestling because tag team wrestling is dope, man. I love tag team wrestling. All right, let's see what we got here. <laughs> Danielle Wolf says, hopefully Impact re-signed Wildcat. It's not fair. He only appeared on two tapings. Uh, Danielle Wolf, are you related to Wildcat? <laughs> um, yeah, nothing against Wildcat, but I haven't seen Wildcat in forever. He doesn't look like he's been, you know, preparing to wrestle, let's just say. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here. All right, Kruger Child 1428 says, The challenger of the month booking is lazy and needs to be addressed. Both knockouts championships fall into the category, fall into that category at the moment. The only knockouts with storylines are non-champions, Jordan and Rachel, Tanel and Taylor. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. It's tough. So with um with Deanna Perazzo, right? She's she's a wrestler, right? That's that that's her thing. She's a wrestler. She's an excellent wrestler. So the best way to utilize her is to put her in great matches. Um, you know, it's tough. You know, it's, it's tough. You know, they, they gave her a, a goon squad. Um, and she certainly does stand out as being the top of the division. But you're right. She doesn't have a lot of great storylines going on right now. It's, just, it's like you said, it's challenger of the month. Whoever they can bring in and try to find a way to make them seem like some sort of credible threat, some sort of credible challenger to Deanna Perrazzo. And... How they're going to get there, I'm not sure yet. Is Rachel Ellering it? I wouldn't say so right now. Um, you know, who's it going to be? Who's going to be the next credible challenger? I think, you know, the only person who it could possibly be is Taylor Wilde because we have not seen her uh, challenge Deanna Perrazzo yet. And if it's not her, then who, right? Who are the baby face challengers that could possibly challenge Deanna Perrazzo's, uh, her, her reign of terror? All right, I'll take uh, one or two more here. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, Humble Beast says, also, what's up with Kylie Ray wrestling for other companies? I read she's still signed with Impact, but she is wrestling on NWA. Last thing, I'm not a fan of the Good Brothers. <laughs> They're not all that in the ring or on the mic. We, Impact, lost the team of Ethan Page, Josh. They lost a lot. 
uh, a win impact loss. The team of Ethan, Ethan Page and Josh Alexander, they lost a lot. Uh, we went from LAX, Lucha Bros, Josh and Ethan, to Good Brothers. Impact does way better when they build their own stars instead of bringing in already established stars. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. Um, I think that when it comes to the Good Brothers, you know, there's a lot of relying on their fan base from New Japan. And, you know, there's a certain niche fan that watches, you know, uh, certain stuff they do. It's like, you know, halfway Indies, halfway New Japan. It's the AEW fan. That's who it is. And so they're really they're really depending on that fan to think the Good Brothers are cool and just come over and buy their stuff. I agree with you. I don't see it. I don't, you know, I, I don't think they're really funny or, um, you know, they I haven't been wowed by any of their matches. But, listen, <laughs> Impact thinks they're cool, so whatever. But you're, you're not wrong. Uh, okay, let's see. All right, last one. Carter Inc. says, I find it hard to see anything serious coming of these WWE New Japan talks. WWE has a binding track of uh, is that binding? Yeah, a binding track record of refusing to do anything but bury talent from other promotions or that they did not create. Basically, WWE doesn't play well with others. And New Japan has always seemed to be very smart slash protective whenever they send their talent to other promotions. And Vince would see zero star power in guys like Okada, Ibushi, etc. Just look at how much of a jabroni Shinsuke Nakamura has become in WWE. New Japan is better continuing to work with Impact and AEW. Carter, you basically regurgitated what I said earlier, and I totally agree with you. You hit it on the head. Thanks for your comments. Thank you, everybody, for your comments. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the show. That's all we got for this week. Um, follow me on Twitter, on Instagram. Follow me on all your social medias, at TW Talking About. Um, follow the show. Follow BQ. Um, let's bring more people into the conversation. If you like these shows, post them to your social media. Tag somebody in them. Uh, tell a friend to tell a friend. Let's bring more people into the conversation. Um, I'll be, you know, live tweeting Impact every week. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, we can hop in the conversation and talk about the show as it's going on. <clears throat> I believe BQ might be back with us next week. So we'll see. We'll see. All right. In the meantime, in between time, I'm TW. Peace.